No question? When did you start working on putting together this project? The book? This book? My book? My book? 2004? <laughs> How many people did you interview? Uh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Including mm -hmm. Mr. Donnan, who worked with my dad at SEBA. So happy to have you here. Yes. So uh, SEBA was very supportive of these efforts. What motivated them all through those years uh, to to pursue this, these books, these illustrations. I mean, part of it started as advertising, but it sounds like they, they stuck with it for a very, very long time. Yeah, the, the clinical symposia that he did and um, had no advertising that had to do with the topic of the, of the, of the monographs. Maybe there was some advertising in the back with some other people, but that was incidental to the top. And it was always for um, goodwill, and, you know, to, to it was for the medical profession. And the books were sold at cost. They were not sold for profit. Um, the SIBA did them. Um, so it was for the SIBA name that they did that, that they became his patron. And, and they became known a lot more for the, for the, by Frank Netter and for the Frank Netter books than they did for their drugs. <laughs> What was the most surprising fact that you learned about your father that perhaps you didn't know until you started this project? That's a really good question. One thing I found was when I was asking people to be interviewed, I went through all the green books and through all the clinics about you, and I looked up all the doctors, and then I had to find them where they were, and whoever I could find, everyone, everyone that I was able to locate was more been happy to talk to me about working with my dad. Mm -hmm. And they just loved him so much. And I knew that he was respected, but I didn't know that he was loved like that. You know? They did it for him, not for me. So. I was really interested in especially some of the early paintings and drawings that weren't medical, because of course everything I've seen has been medical. Throughout his life, did he continue to do much that was non-medical, or was it all pretty much consumed? He did a few here and there, you know, a few oil paintings. We like to work with that. Um, I showed you the one of my siblings. Mm -hmm. He did a, a couple of oil paintings of my stepmother, and but really, he didn't have much time yeah. for doing that. I mean, he led a very full life, and they had a, a good social life. And then he liked to play <coughs> golf because he was sitting at the drawing board all day and he might to go out in the afternoon for a few hours and hit some golf balls much as you know much as you might go to a gym or something you like to hit golf balls and, um, yes um, this is just a comment but first thank you so much because it was just great to, to hear the personal story behind the career of a really great person <coughs> I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew the generosity of <coughs> Francine in, in giving some of the early sketches done by her father to this library. And so it, it's important because I think part of what I think you were telling in the story is not just your father, but the importance of the, the whole profession of medical art. And it isn't anything <coughs> like that today. He really was a national treasure. There's only one person left him. So it's really great. That, that this library has some of those original drawings as well as all that you've written about in the Yes. <clears throat> oh, yes. What happened to all the 4,000 plus original paintings? Okay, so hey, <coughs> when SEPA commissioned them, they bought them. Okay, they bought them. All the rights and the paintings. So they went to SEPA. Then SEPA. At some time, they merged with Geige, the Geige Corporation, it became Siba Geige, Siba Geige. And then um, in the 1990s, Siba Geige merged with Sandoz and now is Novartis. Okay? So the paintings belong now to Novartis, the original paintings. But then they sold the rights to the paintings, to, and the rights now to the paintings are owned by Elsevier. So Elsevier mm -hmm. is, a, is continuing to publish 
um, Nether books. Do they ever exhibit the original paintings? Once in a while, actually, we had we had an exhibit of the original paintings here in the library. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you mentioned some some of these uh, medical and surgical influences um, in terms of uh, C. Ever Coup and uh, Deke. Did he have any equivalents uh, in the art world that he associated with? Oh, yeah. He liked influence? to know. He was he was. He was a member of the um, Academy of Medicine in New York, and he was also a member of the um, um, uh, Society of Illustrators and the Sal Gundy Club in New York, but he was an artist member. And he would go, they had, I guess they still have, I remember going with him to the Society of Illustrators for lunch. And there would be some great artists there, from, uh, Norman Rockwell and Lou Goldberg and um, some other <coughs> And, and he would rub shoulders with them, and, he, and it, was, it was great. He'd have lunch with them, and then he'd go to the teaching hospitals and um, meet with the great doctors, you know. I had the pleasure of, of knowing Frank Netter uh, when I was at, with Seaver Geige. And uh, I saw him mainly in Florida at, at his home there. And he was as gracious as, as anyone could possibly be. And uh, I'm so glad that I didn't know him. I'm glad you did too. <laughs> when did he die? Huh? When did he die? He died in 1991 at the age of 85. And I was surprised at that. I didn't think he would. Did he die? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he would go beyond 85. <laughs> Where is he buried? In Florida. He lived in Florida for, I don't know, 25, 30 years, the last part of his life. He loved living in Florida. In Palm Beach. <coughs> Yes. Francine, uh, his, uh, your mother, his, his wife, was um, a doctor from the North Carolina, wasn't she? She was. People on that might be interested in that. Okay. So my mother um, went to medical school here at Carolina, which um, in those days was a two-year school, as some of you may know. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a hospital here, so the students had to go elsewhere to finish their medical education. and. Um, they got very good science education here, but then they would go to places like Harvard, or my mother went to New York University. And um, she was in the same class with my dad. She um, also interned at Bellevue Hospital, and she, um, in medicine and surgery, and she has some um, interesting stories about her medical education and what it was like for a woman in the 1920s, 1930s studying medicine. And, um, and that ambulance that I showed you the picture there is the ambulance and how when the, the, the driver saw so it was a woman doctor in the back, oh boy, would he drive that ambulance crazy through the L. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then um, she graduated, she finished her internship and she got a job right away with um, the health department of the city of New York and she was taking care Everybody asked me, well, what kind of doctor was she? Well, it was unusual because she was taking care of women and children. She would go into the jails and take care of the prostitutes, and she would go into the schools and take care of the children, and that's what she did. Mm -hmm. And then she got an idea. She would write a um, syndicated, she wrote a syndicated newspaper column about women's health uh, from a doctor's point of view, and that was very popular. And uh, so that's what she did. She did have, she had a practice too for a while. What was her name? Huh? What was her name? Her name was Mary. The name has my middle name, I'm named after her, I'm named after my father and my mother. And um, her last name was MacFadgen. And this is my cousin here, my cousin. Carol MacFadgen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I live in Carolina Meadows. And every month or so, we have, I think, third-year students, med students come through. 
And I have mentioned the name Netter because I've heard Netter, Netter, Netter from no so many <laughs> times. And I've asked them, do you use those atlases? <gasps> Netter's atlases? He said, Edward Metzdu knows them. So I think you probably know, would like to know that his name, his work still goes on. And he is so well, I won't well. surprise you if I tell you that. I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a first year dental student and I have a copy sitting on my dining room table right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>